Hey, in this video, I want to share um, my workflow for creating really cool and stunning designs for your um, freelance projects, maybe personal projects. I usually do this for freelancing. How I go about creating really nice hero sections where I get the art from, uh, how to customize the art, and then how to implement that into a front end. So this video is going to be very front end specific and no back end code involved at all, CSS, design and that kind of cool stuff. Okay, so let's get into my workflow for creating high value designs that you can pitch to your clients uh, to convince them that you're doing a good job and you'll see what I mean here in a second. Let's dive right in and take a look at how to create a really nice website hero section. So let's get started and the cornerstone of whatever we'll be doing to create killer designs and uh, we'll create one together in this video um, will happen with Midjourney. Now Midjourney is a Discord bot and yes, you can build really cool stuff with a Discord bot. However, uh, AI art, which we are going to be generating, is a controversial topic. I don't really want to get into that. And because some people argue it is stealing from artists, other people argue, you know, it's just uh, synthesizing the raw data and then turning that into new images. I don't want to get into that dis uh, discussion at all. All I know is that Midjourney um, can do really, really nice stuff for us when it comes to... Um, you know, uh, creating really cool designs. And so let me explain the process really quick and then let's design uh, a piece together. Um, so the process is generally first uh, create the art in mid journey in this Discord bot right here that I'll put the link to in the description. And as you can see in my um, mid journey account, I can pull that over. I've created uh, quite a bit of stuff. Um, I'm on the paid plan, but you can get started for totally free. Uh, you can see a bunch of art um, that I've created just for a, a client project that I'm currently working on. And you can see it can it can really do some amazing stuff. And um, then after that, we'll put that into Photoshop and create a 1920 by 1080 frame of that. Then implement that, implement that into our code right here. You can see the implementation, for example. And afterwards, um, we are converting that into an actual website. So we're, we are uh, first creating the sketch in Adobe XD. That's what I usually do for my freelance clients uh, to send them the, the draft of this, if they see if they like the design. In this case, the freelance client I'm working with, um, by the way, I'll also do a separate video on the whole freelancing stuff. Um, uh, he really enjoyed the design. Uh, and approved it, so I um, put it into a hero section and also the how it should look in mobile. This is uh, German, doesn't really matter. Uh, you could do the same thing on English for your clients. And the hamburger menu, and then after the design got approved, oops, um, put that into code, and uh, as a real website, it looks like this. So as you can see, it uh, comes really, really close to this uh, layout right here, and also the mobile version. Um, like it's it's responsive, it's optimized for everything. Also, the mobile version um, looks just like uh, what was advertised with the addition of a very handy UX-friendly mobile menu with the uh, oops with the image below the text. So it looks really cool. And I say uh, let's get into creating uh, our own stuff with Midjourney and uh, going through the process one time together. So with Midjourney, um, we can type in whatever we want. And I've prepared something here. I want a wild deer in an autumn forest uh, as a fantasy painting. Um, and yeah, that's just the topic I want to make a hero section for. Obviously, you could put in here whatever you want. And then we're going to use the version 4 of Midjourney, which is the newest one. And then we also want a stylized. So how creative uh, should it be? Let's set that to, you know, uh, let's do 750 and see what happens. Okay. We are gonna, oh, hold up, V4, okay, uh, so the V4 needs to be separate, um, so let's put it like this, and then V space 4, there we go. By the way, you could po uh, also put an image link, even two, at the start of this prompt, and then um, my journey would look at the images and then generate something similar based off of that uh, image that you've provided, uh, so in addition to your prompt. In our case, we're just gonna use the text prompt. And uh, this is going to happen pretty fast. Um, so as you can see, it's at 0%. It's in fast mode. And while it's generating our prompt, let's take a look at what other people are creating. Um, some of it would be really amazing for websites. Like I could imagine this top left one being on a website, for example. And uh, by the way, if you're on the paid plan, like I am, then you also have the commercial license to use it. 
And uh, okay, this this could be promising. Um, this could be a cool logo for a website. Some of the some of these are not really website compatible. Uh, some of them are though, which is really cool. And I think it's uh, done. Yes, it is done. And that just looks really really nice. And uh, I think the bottom left one we could use as an actual um, website hero section. So how about we upscale that? Uh, so we can upscale this one. Right now the format is quite small, but when we upscale, it gets upscaled into uh, 10, like 1024 pixels times uh, 1024 pixels. As you can see, it received the upscaling job. And then that is what we're going to use to work with uh, inside of Photoshop. So the upscaled version, because this one is just for generating ideas. And then um, we want to use the, oops, the upscaled version um, for actual, you know, hero section. We don't just want to uh, use the very small one because that would look weird. So let's give it a second, uh, let it upscale, and then we'll put that into Photoshop when it's done. Okay, it seems to be done, and it has already corrected some minor mistakes it did in the original version. That's great. So let's open that as the original and uh, download that. I'm going to save that um, somewhere just to my desktop for now. Let's call it the year. There we go. We've downloaded that. And now let's put that into our project. So into Photoshop, put it in here. There we go. Can get rid of the original one. And this is our deer that we want to use as a hero section. So to do that, um, there's a really cool tool in Photoshop specifically that we can use. Um, so let's copy the deer over to this one, which is 1920 by 1080. Um, now we also want color in this one. So RGB, don't flatten and don't rasterize, looks good. We can scale this up just a tiny bit. Actually, no, let's not do that. It looked good this way. And uh, then, uh, if you if you look really careful, there is kind of an edge here. Um, but since the background is super even, uh, I think we can just literally take that, create a new layer, fill that out in this gray, and that will look perfectly smooth around the edges. All right, and that is the basis for our hero section done. Now we can just save this as, let's save it, um, you know, under the desktop as uh, dear-hero, for example. We want a large file size. And now um, let's just make, um, I'm just gonna create a subsection in this website. Now you'd probably have um, another website for this. Or actually, no, we can we can do that. I think that's more that's better. Let's go into the desktop. Let's create a new project. So see the desktop and then npx create a next app at latest. Run that, um, and then let's name it dear hero. Yes, TypeScript. Yes, yes. Then that's going to initialize our project. And um, when it's done initializing, we're going to put the hero section into there. And this is usually the time that I uh, think about how the design is going to look. Um, now, in this hero section, it's going to be uh, pretty fast. I might just uh, insert the image, then a heading and a paragraph. And that's, you know, pretty much it. Pretty much everything we want for the hero section. Maybe a button as well. Um, so let's give it a second. All right, it's already done, apparently. We can put the dear hero into the public folder. And then let's get this open. Okay, so let's start this up, yarn dev, and yeah, that should open up right here. Let's open Firefox with that, localhost 3000. Okay, and that's our standard create next app, great. Now I'm just going to put this all in the index um, because this is going to be a very small project, just the hero section. Um, but you put this in a separate component if you want to expand on this. So our hero section, there we go. And then let's start with, you know, just a div that has a class name. And I am going to open the other project that I did, uh, which is this one right here uh, on my left side, just to get a bit of styling guidelines on how exactly I inserted the, oops, the um, image. So let's go into this project. And now obviously um, the CSS isn't the most important part of the video, but I think it does make sense to actually kind of get into CSS in this video because that's, you know, uh, what it is about, styling the hero section. So 
let's give this um, class name of relative with full and we're using tailwind to style this and we could just follow along in regular um, CSS but I think it's just way easier in tailwind way less of a hassle and um, so flex medium block flex column justify center and I think we're also gonna give it uh, some actually no let's let's keep it like that and uh, that should be just fine um, all right and then in here we're gonna render the image from Next.js which is gonna be really performant okay we're already importing that we can get rid of this by the way we don't need that and we don't need inter as well but we do still need to install tailwind so tailwind next oops next yes. let's get that installed really quick um so we're gonna copy these commands right here go into the project just uh end the server for a second paste them then we want to copy this whole tailwind config uh, into right here paste that and that's gonna be up Wait, is that gonna be up? Uh, 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 no, that's still pagers. Okay, so this is still Next.js 12. Uh, I think I did the, the, the other one 13, but this is still Next.js 12. Uh, totally fine though. Um, then we need the, this into our global.css. There we go. I think that's all we need to do. Yes, okay, that should work. Now we can close the globals. We're importing the image. Now that needs a source, which is gonna be uh, from our public folder. So what did we call it? We called it uh, dear hero.png and the alt tag is going to be hero dear image. Okay, uh, remember if this is the largest image and it's a priority, uh, the quality on this hero section very important. So we're going to give it a quality of 100, class name of um, absolute, uh, hidden. Actually, the hidden is just if you want to start it from mobile. Um, I don't think we are going to worry about it too much for now. Let's just give it a pointer events um, of none and a select of none. Okay, and that should do just fine. Um, we can insert the style of uh, object fit cover and then object position at, you know, we can try out 75%, for example. And let's just see how that looks. So let's go into our local host 3000, and we also need to start that up. So yarn dev, read out the page when we're here. And let's see what this looks like so far. Oops, and it seems like it forgot the URL we wanted to go to. So localhost 3000. Okay, it's missing, <laughs> missing. It's missing the with property. Uh, so we're gonna insert a fill right here. It's gonna get rid of that. And as you can see, that looks nice. That looks pretty, pretty good. And that is the point where we would um, work on two things next, which would A, be the um, title, which we can still do. Um, and then next you'd think about how would this look respons uh, responsibly, but also responsively. Um, so how would you optimize this for mobile, right? Um, as I showed you, that is very important, especially in the client draft that you send out. Um, you need to think about how this will look on mobile, uh, obviously, um, even if you're not heavily into, oops, into front end, that is just essential. Having responsive design and Tailwind makes it very easy with their mobile first approach either way. Um, so I'm not going to get into too much depth about the uh, whole uh, title styling. So I'm just uh, going to copy paste the title I had uh, from the other project and it looked like this. Uh, I'm just going to walk you very quickly through what we're doing here. Essentially, uh, we've got a lot of padding and then styling from the top, depending on the screen size. So let's give this a background red of 100, just so you can see what's happening a bit better. So this is the whole div that we have. And essentially, uh, we're just focusing on the left side of that. So it looks very nice when it is next to the uh, large hero image of the deer that we have here on the right hand side. Next up, we just have a little paragraph right here. And then um, I usually do text gray 700 because I think it fits the white backgrounds uh, quite well. Uh, in this case, it's not uh, purely white, but it's like a very light gray, I guess, but that's just fine. And then, you know, just two buttons that you normally have in a hero section, a, a primary button and a secondary one, which you would uh, probably, 
um, want as separate components, so you could reuse them uh, more easily. So abstract this button into a button called, you know, um, let's let's do that. Let's have a components. And there we go. Put that at the top level. Then go into those components. Have something like a secondary button dot tsx, which is going to receive the text. That's going to be a string. There we go. And then just abstract this button away into there. That's what I meant. Like this. And then just put the uh, text right here. And then render out the secondary button right here with a text of this. What it was previously. Save that. We have essentially the exact same outcome, but we abstracted the button into a second uh, into uh, its own component. So it's way easier to re reuse the same styling across the whole application. Alternatively, you could um, abstract the class name um, into uh, one. So for example, you say secondary button, and then put all the class names we had previously these ones into a tailwind class that's associated with secondary button. I think, however, this is just easier um, and more intuitive. And what did I do? Uh, which makes more sense, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create really awesome designs and uh, stunning hero sections with really nice art that um, you don't even have to pay for if you're using the free version of Midjourney, which gives you like about uh, 25 images, I believe. But be careful with the commercial rights that I think you only have when you actually do pay money. But for just testing it out, this is uh, perfect. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. Uh, I just really enjoy uh, working with them for my uh, freelance projects and also personal projects. I just think it looks really great. Okay, that's all I want to show you. That's kind of like my hero section freelance workflow. Uh, right there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as I did making this because I think it just has so much potential. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and bye bye.